I'm a robot vacuum cleaner, so yeah, I got one gig. I suck up dirt, so pardon my inferiority complex about Geico, who does so much more. Like, not only could they save their customers money on car insurance, but they got fast and friendly claim service, too. And an award-winning mobile app. Plus access to licensed agents 24-7. Who am I kidding? I can't even do corners. Uh-oh. Choking hazard. <gasps> Popcorn girdles. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. This, this is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. Oh! It's a new day, y'all. It's a new day. You ain't accustomed to hearing somebody this loud, but damn it, get used to it. It's the new Stephen A. Smith show coming at you nationwide over the airwaves of ESPN Radio. Check your local listings. I'm all over the country nationwide on free terrestrial radio, Sirius XM Channel 80 as well. You can't escape me. I'm sorry. I know you tried, but you can't pull it off. The number to call up as always is 888 729-3776. Once again, that's 888-729-3776. Want to give, start off the show giving major, major props to the honchos at ESPN Radio, mainly my man Troy Keller and the rest of the crew looking out for me, having faith in me, taking a risk by extending me nationwide. I tried to warn them. I tried to warn him. I said, I said, boss, are you sure you want to do this? I'm just not sure. I'm just, are you sure? He said, yes, we're sure. So I'm over in, I'm in over 250 markets throughout the United States of America. You can catch me on an AM or FM signal near you plus Sirius XM. Buckle up. Here I come. And oh, by the way, don't get me wrong. There will be guests on the show. There will be A-listers on the show and all of that other stuff. But I want you to know that it's begrudgingly because when you tune in for two hours of Stephen A., I want to give you two hours of me. I don't like sharing the airways. Ain't a lot of you. I don't like it. I like I, I, and I know the bosses want me with guests all the time. Look, I like it to be about me. You're tuning in to listen to me. I want you to know from 1 to 3 Eastern time, 10 to noon Pacific Coast time and beyond. And beyond that, the bottom line, I want you to hear me. Okay, guests take away from me. So understand, when you have a guest, I have a guest, it's because they made me. I just want to make sure y'all know that. Just want to make sure y'all know that. Got a whole bunch of topics to get into, obviously. NFL coaching carousel. Some guys lost their job, obviously. John Gruden's in the news, my colleague here at ESPN, because the Oakland Raiders are very, very interested in him. But the number one story to talk about is the national championship of semifinal playoffs. Because and I'm not, and, and guess what? You know how I'm always saying roll tide, roll tide. That's not the story today. That game between Oklahoma and Georgia was spectacular. To some of y'all's eyes. To me, I was very, very annoyed. I'm gonna be the first to admit I was very, very annoyed. I don't care what anybody says. How on how in the good Lord's name do you give up more than nine yards of carry as a defense? I know Nick Chubb and Sony Michelle is no, they are no joke. I get that, but 326 yards? I mean, touchdown runs of 50, 48, twice, 75. I mean, Lord, the defense. I mean, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I mean, listen, coach, coach, like, I mean, come on now. You, you got to do better than that. I mean, have you guys taken a moment to really reflect on what transpired last night? 75 yard touchdown run. By Sony Michelle, just a minute into the second quarter. All right? I mean, think about it. A 50-yard run by Chubb. Another 38-yard run by Sony Michelle. I mean, come on now. And then to give up a 27-yard touchdown run in overtime? I mean, the field goal gets blocked by Georgia. Oklahoma only needs a field goal. And the, and before they had an opportunity to pass gas, they run. They give up a 27-yard touchdown run? I mean, Really? Really? So a, a lot of y'all are going to be excited about it because, again, we're looking at a situation where it's all SEC, it's Alabama versus Georgia. I don't have a problem with that. Some people look at it and they say the West Coast, they ain't going to watch. Look, if you love college football, the two best teams in the nation are playing. It'll be on ESPN. It's the national championship on the line. And then guess what? I'm going to show up. I'm, I'm, listen, I'm going to actually show up for the national I'm showing up to. The, I'm showing up to the ATL. I can't miss this. Now, I'm all about Roll Tide. I'm all about Roll Tide. And I lost faith in Georgia, in, in, in all honesty. I lost total faith in them. Total faith in them. When they turned around and they lost to Auburn. 
when they were the number one ranked team in the nation and Auburn spanked them. But they made amends in the SEC championship game by returning a the favor. They made amends. And I get that. And this same Georgia team that everybody's loving right now, okay, the same Georgia team that everybody's looking at, and they're looking at this duo, this dynamic duo that, by the way, rushed for over 8,000 yards in their career, which is an all-time duo record. We get all of that. But here's the reality. You gave up 48 points. I mean, you gave up 48 points in a national semifinal playoff game. I mean, 48 points. And now you look at it, you, you, you got this kid Bellamy, this defensive player for Georgia, screaming at Baker Mayfield, the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, talking about be humble, be humble, be humble. Well, he, he scored 48 points. Is that really the moment to be yelling at Baker Mayfield, telling him to be humble? I wouldn't need to be humble if I dropped 48 points. It ain't my fault we lost. That's how I'd be looking at it. As a quarterback who's the Heisman Trophy winner, who, by the way, has completed over 70% of his passes for the second consecutive season, who has thrown 83 touchdowns and just 14 interceptions in the last two seasons, I, 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 I'm just saying, should Baker Mayfield be a little humble? Sure, but somebody on Georgia's defense ain't the person to tell me that. That's how I would look at it. And so when I look at it from that perspective, I think it's important to note that. Pay attention to it and recognize that Baker Mayfield is a stud. Now, somewhere along the line, we've got to ask ourselves this question. If you got a top five pick, are you spending it on Baker Mayfield? In the NFL draft. I don't think most people would. I wouldn't. I wouldn't make them top five. Five to ten, possibly. Definitely anything ten passed. But a top five pick in the NFL draft, where where I'm gonna take him? Will he uh, will he help Cleveland? Eh. Cleveland needs I, I mean Cleveland needs our prayers. They need more than make a ba- Baker Mayfield. They need prayer. And more than on a Sunday afternoon or a Sunday morning. So we got that issue. All right, Giants, uh, depends on who your coach is. And oh, by the way, if you draft, if you get Josh McDaniels to come over as the offensive coordinator from New England to be in the head coach for the New York Giants, I'm not sure that Josh McDaniels has the most pristine record. He did want Tim Tebow, my friend, Tim Tebow, who I love dearly, but never believed to be a quarterback. Great football player, but an NFL quarterback now. Okay, so who else do we got? I got to look at all of those things. But I digress. Point that I'm trying to make is Baker Mayfield is a stud. He has proven it on a collegiate level. He deserves to be a first-round pick. Anywhere from 10 and beyond is fine with me. 5 to 10 is a bit risque, but he might be worth it. Top 5, absolutely, positively not. If you disagree, feel free to call up, but it'll be at your own peril. 888-729-3776. That's 888 888-SAY-ESPN. That is the number to call. One other important point that I have to get to. And, and, and by the way, just so y'all know, because I can be relatively transparent at moments, I got the big boss watching me, okay? So when you got the big boss watching you, you got to be careful about the things that you say, all right? You got to be careful. But I also need to be honest. And I need to be transparent because you need to know that when you listen to the Stephen A. Smith show, that's exactly who you're getting. You're getting Stephen A. So I'm going to say stuff on the air that I would say to folks face, which brings me to John Gruden. (sighs) How can I put this? I want to first preface my comments about the story involving John Gruden ultimately becoming the next head coach for the Oakland Raiders by saying I'm a fan of John Gruden's. I think that John Gruden is a phenomenal football mind. If ESPN were to lose him, I think it would be a tremendous loss for this network and this family. The man knows football inside and out. He has done an incredible job for us on Monday night football. Um, I personally talked to him on a few occasions. I'm very fond of him. He's a good man. And all he cares about is football. I mean that professionally. Of course, he loves his family and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying. Let me not get too literal. But the man sleeps, eats, and breathes football. He's incredibly connected to the NFL. If the Oakland Raiders decide, as our very own Adam Schefter, who will be on the show today, by the way, has reported, If they bring John Gruden on as their head coach, it would be a tremendous coup for them. It it perfectly justifies them getting rid of Jack Del Rio. Good man. Did a good job for Oakland last year. Struggled this year. Um, This is not to knock John Gruden. 
But there's no way on earth that he deserves an ownership stake in an NFL franchise. When he coached Oakland, 8-8, eight and 8-8, eight, eight and eight, 12 and 4, and 10 and 6. He had a winning record overall of 38 and 26 as head coach for the Oakland Raiders. It was 57 and 20 and, and 55 as head coach for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He won a Super Bowl the year he was traded from Oakland to Tampa, you know, when he replaced Tony Dungy. I got, I'm going to say it simple and plain that even my boss could not disagree with me about. Did Bill Parcells have an ownership stake in the franchise? Eh. Does Bill Belichick have an ownership stake in the Patriots? Eh. Did Tony Dungy have an ownership stake? Eh. Did Bill Cowher have an ownership stake? Eh. Does Mike Tomlin have an ownership stake? Eh. Does Mike McCarthy have an ownership stake? Eh. Does Sean Payton have an ownership stake? Eh. Oh, let me go old school on y'all. Did Bill Walsh ever have an ownership stake? Never happened. Did Tom Landry ever have an ownership stake? Never happened. Did Chuck Noll for the Pittsburgh Steelers ever have an ownership stake? No. So let me get this straight. A man who coached in the National Football League for 11 years with a 54% winning percentage, 95 and 81, one Super Bowl championship on his resume, who has not coached since 2008. He deserves to be the precedent-setting coach who gets an ownership stake in a franchise? Have y'all lost y'all minds? Have y'all lost y'all minds? 888-729-3776. That's 888-SAY-ESPN. This is the new Stephen A. Smith Show coming at you nationwide. Check your local listeners. Plus 250 markets over the country, throughout the country, not to mention Sirius XM Channel 80. That's the ESPN channel on Sirius XM, by the way. You're listening live to your boy, Stephen A. This is the debut and a taste of things to come for a very, very long time. Don't touch that dial. Back with more in a minute. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Kick my music. They need to understand it's a different day. It's a different flavor. It ain't all of this other stuff. This is this is the Stephen A. Smith Show. Kick that music, Cat Pastor. Kick that music. Ah! The new Stephen A. Smith Show coming at you live on ESPN Radio. Check your local listings. 250 markets plus across the United States of America plus Sirius XM. Channel 80. 888. 729-3776. 729-3776. That's 888-SAY-ESPN. It's time for Straight Talk brought to you by the Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. Want to make sure I pointed that out. Ended the first segment by getting into John Gruden, and here's why. Ladies and gentlemen, just introducing myself to some of those uh national markets out there. I'm not anti-anything. I swear to you, I'm not. But I'm pro-fairness. As an African-American, you'll see me pouring out the paucity of opportunities for African-Americans, but you'll also hear me tell you when somebody's doing something wrong and somebody deserves what's coming to them. I might sit up there and I might have a problem with the fact that John Gruden, they're actually talking about an ownership stake because that's not something that's going to happen for an African-American. Particularly if you're a head coach that won just 54% of your games and you have one Super Bowl title. If that's the case, excuse me, how come Mike Tomlin doesn't have a, a Super Bowl, a, a, a ownership stake in the Pittsburgh Steelers? He's got a Super Bowl title. Why not? I mean, is it, is it not fair for me to look at that? But the same dude that'll point that out, that'll point out that Vance Joseph for the Denver Broncos deserves to keep his job. Because one season should not define him, particularly when he can't find a quarterback to save his life. Go give me Trevor Simeon or Paxton Lynch. I ain't trying to hear it. That same person that would say that would tell you, I understand Detroit feeling the need to move beyond Jim Caldwell. I don't understand how Hugh Jackson could still keep his job having one and 31 record in two years. And I love Hugh Jackson, the man. I love him as a person, but one and 31 is one and 31. My Lord, 
That's not even a 3% winning percentage. And don't get me started on Marvin Lewis. I mean, is there an, is there a louder voice out there that you have heard calling for the firing, the dismissal of Marvin Lewis? That would be me. And while I'm somebody that has defended Colin Kaepernick's right to do what he did, I'm also the folk, I'm also the person that said, oh, in the world of business, if you're an NFL owner, that ain't your problem. You in the business to make foot make money off of football games. That's what you're in the business for. Now, if Colin Kaepernick was protesting against the National Football League, that would have been different. But if Colin Kaepernick, even though the subject matter was racial oppression and, and, and racial inequality and police brutality, guess what? That ain't an NFL owner's problem. If I'm not prejudiced or I haven't been biased and he ain't protesting me, why should I sit up there and stomach losing dollars because he wants to use my football platform to be socially conscious? I can't knock an owner for feeling that way, albeit, albeit I might feel differently. So these are the kind of things that we have to pay attention to moving forward and understanding that everybody ain't the same. So the ultimate issue and the ultimate objective is about being fair. New York Giants are looking for a new head coach. They're going to interview a gentleman by the name of Josh McDaniels. Josh McDaniels, for those of you who have known, is the offensive coordinator for the New England Patriots. He clearly has a fan in NFL analyst for the New York Daily News, Gary Myers, who wrote a column. He usually writes outstanding columns. I have profound respect for Gary Myers. I truly do. He does a great job. But it is clear he believes that Josh McDaniels is the right man for the job. I'm not so sure. Just like I wasn't sure that Dave Gettleman was the right GM for the New York Giants. As a personnel director with the New York Giants, he oversaw two champions. I mean, he has something to do with two Super Bowl championships, by the way, over the New England Patriots. And he was the GM when the Carolina Panthers went 15 and one and went to the Super Bowl a few years back with Cam Newton. Gettleman is qualified, but he's also somebody that was considered to be an individual that alienated players. And so if you're the New York Giants and you want to move in a forward direction, I got to wonder what you're thinking about, particularly when Odell Beckham Jr. is entering the fifth year option of his contract, getting paid about $8.4 million in terms of a cap hit. By the way, he's clearly and flagrantly underpaid. He's looking to get paid and might elect to hold out. How is Gettleman going to handle that? I don't know. I just don't know. Inquirer minds would like to know. We shall see. As it pertains to Josh McDaniel. Yes, he was 33 years old when he got the head coaching job in Denver. But damn it, you didn't do a good job, period. Because you were a Bill Belichick wannabe. And you tried to bring the same stuff to the Mile High City. And it didn't work. Period. Now, does that mean at age 41 you don't deserve a second chance? Of course not. Particularly when you've had this level of success that you've had. But here's something that nobody brings up in a negative fashion. I'll bring it up. We are so quick to rave the relationship that he has with Tom Brady and the success he has enjoyed as the offensive coordinator. Is John, is Tom Brady not considered arguably the greatest quarterback of this generation? Raise your hand, Nuno, when I'm talking to you, one of my producers. Raise your hand, Cat Pastor, when I'm talking to you. Thank you very much. He's considered arguably the greatest quarterback ever. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if Tom Brady is so great, well, how great does Josh McDaniels have to be? It ain't like he turned Jay Cutler into a Hall of Famer. We talk about Tom Brady. When Josh McDaniel was in Denver as the head coach, wasn't Tom Brady still considered a great quarterback? I think he was doing just fine without Josh McDaniel. Last time I checked. I think he was doing just fine. So why is it that Josh McDaniel should get so much credit for Tom Brady? Matt Patricia, I like him as well. Very qualified head coach, head coaching material. No doubt 
But I recall us lamenting the state of affairs as it exists with New England's defense over the past couple of years, A. And B, last time I checked, what was Bill Belichick's job before he became the head coach? I believe he was a defensive coordinator. I believe he was considered one of the greatest defensive coordinators the game has ever seen. So doesn't it stand the reason that Bill Belichick might have his fingerprints on the Patriots defense? So then again, how much credit would Patricia deserve? All I'm saying is these are safe questions to ask, as opposed to assuming that just because the Patriots are successful, that must mean they're great. But that's just me. 888-729-3776. That's 888-729-SAY-ESPN. Straight talk, wireless, nationwide coverage on America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE networks. I'll get back to your calls or I'll get to your calls in just a minute. After all, I'm nationwide now. I got calls coming in from everywhere. Yeah, I mean everywhere. And I'm looking forward to talking to everybody because I love communicating with my calls. I like communicating with my callers more than I talk to guests, except for when the guests are elite guests. And I got one coming up next. The national championship semifinals took place last night. And as a result of those outcomes, Georgia beating Oklahoma, Alabama beating Clemson. We have an all SEC national championship game coming up Monday night. Who better to talk to than the mouth of the South himself, the voice of the SEC, my buddy, a football guru, if ever there was one, the one and only Paul Feinbaum. He's up next with Stephen A. On ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it. Stephen A. Smith Show coming at you nationwide. 250 plus markets across the United States of America on your AM, FM dial. Look at the local listings near you. Of course, I'm still on Sirius XM Channel 80 as well. It's ESPN Radio presented by Progressive Home Insurance. Getting a quote is easier than ever before. Honored and privileged to have my next guest on the line, one of the preeminent football analysts in America. Some of you know him as the mouth of the South. I know him as far more than that. My buddy, who has his own radio show, by the way, the Paul Feinbaum Show. It's the one and only Paul Feinbaum on the line with me right now. Happy New Year, buddy. How are you? Happy New Year, Stephen A. I know it's a busy day, but uh, congratulations. This is uh, this new distribution of your show is something long overdue and much deserved. And I am. As a friend of yours and a fan, I am thrilled to death. Thank you so much, buddy, and I appreciate that, especially coming from you. Let's get right to it. We've got Alabama, Georgia, two best teams in the nation playing for the national championship in your eyes? I think so. Uh, listen, you, you, we, we saw a, a four-team playoff, and, and these are the two uh, that emerged, and, and I, I have no difficulty with it. And, and quite frankly, uh, don't forget, uh, Alabama was number one in the country originally. Then, uh, then uh, G- Georgia took over when the college football playoff committee came out. When they lost, Alabama took over. So, I mean, th- this is, these are not teams that have come from the back of the pack. Uh, they have been there uh, since the second half of the season. And, and I, I think we saw in Alabama last night uh, how when they when they are healthy. And I heard you talk to Lane earlier, and he made a great point. Right. And I've heard him say that privately, but I've never heard Lane Kiffin say this publicly that Nick Saban has worked his teams too hard uh, in preparation sometimes for bowl games and playoff games. And, and uh, we saw a fresh uh, team last night that was, that was absolutely violent on defense, Stephen A. So uh, that, that was fascinating. And, and obviously, I mean, we, we could talk about the Georgia-Oklahoma game for the next 20 years. Yeah. And, and I'm not sure uh, even as great a writer as you are and others are, we could – aptly describe uh, the intensity and the drama of that football game. It was a pheno- phenomenal intensity and drama, no doubt about that, Paul Feinbaum. But I got to tell you, even though I'm never, I'm not hesitant at all to give credit where credit is due to Georgia because they were incredibly impressive, I just looked at Oklahoma and I said, you know something? You don't belong on this stage uh, defensively because you gave up. You gave up over fifty points, three hundred and six and twenty six yards rushing to to Nick Chubb and Sony Michelle. They averaged more than nine yards a carry. What on earth happened to that defense? Well, I'm not sure. That, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I'm not sure Oklahoma really ever had a great defense. And Stephen, mm-hmm. that that happens. And it says it's so easy and maybe lazy just to blast the big. Uh, excuse me, the Big Twelve. But but they don't they they, they play these uh, tempo uh, spread uh, you know high flying uh, air raid type of the offenses and, and and the defenses just 
uh, they're not prepared like you are in the SEC when when you when you pound it at the line of scrimmage and and you and you have to win the matchups in the trenches and and it, it catches up. And by the way, it catches up to Oklahoma every time when they're in when they're in a situation like this. Bob Stoops, you know, won a national title and. I think 2000, and he lost his next three championship games. This is the second time Oklahoma has been in the college football playoff, and they've yet to get out of the first round, and I think that's a big part of it. We're talking to Paul Farnbaum right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Uh, Paul, Baker Mayfield, Heisman Trophy winner, um, uh, another season completing better than 70% of his passes. He's thrown 83 touchdowns and just 14 interceptions in the last two years. What were your thoughts about his performance last night? How do you basically rate the season that he's had projecting in terms of him moving forward and what you anticipate uh, he'll be deserving of? I mean, I think he's phenomenal, and, and he's so difficult to stop. Yeah, yeah listen, for, for those out there who are blasting him today on the throat slash, I was, I was watching the game in a film room uh, in New Orleans with, with some coaches, and I looked at one or two of them, and I said, what do you do about that? And they said, you really can't do much because that's who he is, and that, that's why he, he's always on the edge. And, Stephen, you understand that. Uh, yes. When you're on the edge, you're going to go over the edge a couple of times, and I, I think that's what makes him so great. And, and I know there's a big discussion about Baker Mayfield in the NFL, but, uh, I mean, how many NFL quarterbacks have the kind of guts that, that he has? Uh uh, I would I would take him. I, I think he's going to be phenomenal. Now, when you say, hold on, Paul. When you say you would take him, I wouldn't take him in my top five. It would be a risk five no. to ten, yeah, and no, anything no. above yeah, ten is good. That. Where where would you take him? Yeah, no, you're right. Listen, uh, absolutely. The, the, but but I mean, I'm, I'm talking about if you if you're just looking at you know as you as you work your way through. I should have said you're absolutely right. Uh, no, he's not. Uh, you know, if I'm, if I'm from Cleveland, and thank goodness I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'm not. Uh, he's not my first or four, or, or second pick, but. But somewhere down the road, uh, down the line, and uh, you know, bottom of the first round, I think he he would be a good choice. Paul Feinbaum, I'm looking at Nick Saban. I'm looking at Kirby Smart. If anything, if anyone knows what Nick Saban likes to do, it would be Kirby. How do you anticipate this? Uh, handicap this matchup for me, if you can. I think of the matchups with former disciples, and and you know that you've seen the stats. Oh, and, uh, they're, they're 0 and 11 against Saban. This is this is the most difficult. Because this guy was was in Nick Saban's uh, inner sanctum two years ago. We, uh, remember, Kirby helped Nick win his last national championship. He's been part of every one of them. Uh, I think it's. Uh, I think he knows more about Saban than, than anyone else. All, all these other guys have been there a couple of years and have gone, or they haven't been there lately. So, so that is a concern. And 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 he is Nick Saban. He talks like him. He sounds like him. They used to joke in Tuscaloosa that he was Nick Saban Jr. Uh, so, so that that's that's an issue, but I still I still like where Alabama is right now, and things can change. I mean, Alabama's still banged up, and they lost maybe lost another player last night on defense, which which they seem to be doing with, with reckless abandon. But 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 I think Kirby, and he also has Mel Tucker, uh, the defensive coordinator, Stephen A., who was on that staff two years ago. So I mean, there's a lot of familiarity. Uh, and, and, you, and you also have one other thing. Jeremy Pruitt, uh, Saban's defensive coordinator, who, who, threw, who threw a perfect, ga- nearly a perfect game last night, he, he, he did a great job. But two years ago, Kirby Smart in the exact same position seemed to lose focus with that extra week. It was actually about nine days uh, or ten days last time because you know he, has a, he, had, an, he had the job in Georgia, and, and yeah. it does catch up with you. You can handle it short term. But another week, you really you're starting to think I'm playing for a national championship. But I'd rather be I'd rather be at, at my my new job where I'm making a couple million dollars a year hiring a staff. Mm. Before I let you get on out of here, as an aside, having nothing to do with a national championship game, I have to bring up Jim Harbaugh because I think about you every time I see him. Lost another game yesterday, South Carolina in the bowl game. Your thoughts about about Jim Harbaugh? What what are your parting words on him for this football season? For his football season because it's now over. Stephen, I, I'm going to give him some advice. Uh, give it up. It's, it's not happening. Uh, he, one, he, he's probably going to be called by, by one of these NFL jobs. Take it. Because after three years, he has not shown me very much at the University of Michigan. He's not going to beat Urban Meyer next year. He's not going to beat James Franklin next year. I mean, he, 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 he's losing. To, he lost to South Carolina yesterday and will Muschamp. i like will he's a good football coach but jim harbaugh is supposed to beat will Muschamp, who who got fired at florida and is coaching at columbia south carolina the second school right now in, in that state 
Uh, I mean, it's just just pack it in. Quit trying to. I mean, quit quit trying to uh, act like you're 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 in the same league with these other guys because you're not. Yeah, I mean, there's only so many times you can take your take your team to to uh, to Florida or take them to see the Pope or take them to Mars. I don't care, but but I think it's over for Jim Harbaugh. Paul Feinbaum, always appreciate you and appreciate you being on my first show going nationwide, man. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. The pleasure was mine, Stephen A. Congratulations again. All right, no problem. The one and only Paul Feinbaum right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. 888-729-3776. That's 888-SAY-ESPN. The new Stephen A. Smith Show coming at you nationwide in 250-plus markets across the United States of America. Still on Sirius XM Channel 80 as well. (sighs) What a good day. What a good day. It just feels good right now. I just had to take a moment to pause and let that all sink in. We'll get to your phone calls for the first time since I've gone nationwide in a minute. You're listening live to Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! Oh, so y'all don't know about this. Y'all don't hear this too much on ESPN Radio. Excuse me. What's your name? Woo! Ha ha ha! Stephen A. Smith Show coming at you right here on ESPN Radio. By the way, I'm about to get into the calls. Let me apply pressure to my listeners out there who want to call in. All right? Now, I haven't said this before, but I'm going to say it now. You see, like I said, you got it. Listen, I've had a lot of stars come on my radio show. They'll be back on. Just like they come on first take, they'll be back on. But when it comes to my radio show, the Stephen A. Smith Show, see, 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 I, I ain't going to lie to you. I like to do the talking. I actually don't like too many guests. I'm ready to talk for two hours. I'm going to be real with you. So when I give it up to a guest, it's got to be a Paul Feinbaum or a guy like Adam Schefter who's coming on 15 minutes past hour number two. See, those are A-listers to me because they got info, which gives me the ammunition that I need to go off the way that I want to go off. Now, when I deviate, I deviate from all that, and I give the lines to the callers. You gotta have energy. You gotta have perspective. You can't be weak. You can't be shy. Because I will not. Have, I, I, and this is against company policy. I'll be the first to admit it. It's not written, but damn it, they don't like it. I don't care. I will hang up on you. I will not hesitate. Don't you doubt it. Now, I'm not quite. My, I'm not quite like Mark Levin. Who'll sit up there and hang up on you and call your name? (laughs) Now, I love the guy. You understand? So I can say that. But I I was going to hang up on you, though. Make no mistake about that. My four favorite radio hosts. Joe Madison. Sean Hannity. Karen Hunter. Mark Levin. Two hardcore conservatives, two hardcore liberals. That's how I like it. I get the best of both worlds. Just so you know. To the phones we go. Nate in West Palm Beach. You're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. What's up, Stephen A.? Long time listener, first time caller. Congrats on your new market that you got. I appreciate I'm the it. one follower on Twitter. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, but you only got a minute. Go ahead. Not a problem. I got two quick points. Owen 16, Hugh Jackson, he needs to go. Ron Marinelli went 0 16 for the Lions, and they gave him the hook right after the season. Mm-hmm. There's nothing that can justify him still keeping his job. Okay. And number two, what you said on first take was 100% correct. If Isaiah Thomas is ready to come back, don't waste your time and your minutes on Portland. You do it against the Boston Celtics. You show Danny Ainge that it was a mistake for him to let you go. Give me your thoughts. You know what? You're absolutely right about that. Look, man. I'm a fan of Isaiah Thomas. Average 28.9 points a game last year. Shot better than 46%, 38% from three-point range. Kid was an MVP candidate. Stud. We're talking basketball for a quick, quick second, ladies and gentlemen. We deviated from college football and pro football. We're talking basketball right now. NBA. Isaiah Thomas is a miniature dynamo. A stud. Who has been out all season long for his hip injury. If you ain't ready to play, then damn it, don't play. Don't come back against Portland, but the team that traded you away, whose GM you talked about in Danny Ainge, suddenly you ain't ready to go against them. I don't want to see Isaiah Thomas tonight, but he don't play in Boston tomorrow night. By the way, I'll be at that game. I don't want to see him then. I, if you're going to play, don't play tonight. Play tomorrow night against Boston because Kyrie's waiting. Kyrie's waiting. And I know Isaiah Thomas ain't scared. Cleveland, Tyron, Lou, the rest of the crew don't be scared. 
And if you ain't ready, then damn it, don't play tonight. Don't play tomorrow night. Wait till the weekend. Because you play them again February 11th, which is an ABC game. I want to see you playing tomorrow night in Boston. Period. Hour number two up next. Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Channel 80 and the ESPN app. Attention shoppers, clean up on aisle 14. Clean up on aisle 14. Someone dropped a jar of pickles. 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 Beatboxing at a big box store. Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to Geico. A red minivan has the lights on in the parking lot. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Geico. This this is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. Hello, everybody. Welcome to hour number two of the Stephen A. Smith Show. The new Stephen A. Smith Show coming at you nationwide in 250 plus markets across the United States of America plus Sirius XM. ESPN Radio Channel 80. Number to call up as always is 888-729-3776. That's 888 888- Say ESPN 888-729-3776. Get instant gold status at Shell. Join the Fuel Rewards program now at fuelrewards.com slash gold. Reminding you that 15 minutes past hour number two right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show, the great Adam Schefter, NFL insider extraordinaire, will be on the show. Looking forward to him joining us. Uh, 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 and, and before I, I go to the calls, uh, because there's still a lot to discuss couple of things I want to mention. One of the other favorite radio hosts I listen to is my man Warren Ballantyne. That brother special as well. Uh, And I wanted to give a personal shout out to my man Roland Martin, uh, whose show on TV one got canceled, but he's a friend of mine and and damn good person. Great political and socially conscious mind. And I wish him nothing but the best. And I just wanted to make sure that I point out. I got my TV screens up in my studio here because in my studio here, I I got a bunch of studios and, uh, um, you watch that show, The Talk, you know, on CBS, Cheryl Underwood is on there. The reason why I bring it up is because she's wearing the same outfit that Steve Harvey wore on New Year's Eve. <laughs> I, mean, I, I love my man, Steve Harvey, but my Lord, some advice. Never, ever, ever host a show in the cold again. He ain't made for it. I mean, I, I, he, he couldn't even laugh straight. He was so stiff. He was so freezing. I mean, Mariah Carey. You know, uh, I, I mean, she looked more comfortable out there than, than Steve Harvey. And that's saying something. That's just saying something. So I just thought I'd point that out. That was just an aside. Anyway, back to business right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, 888-729-3776. That's 888-SAY-ESPN. Ended the first hour talking about Isaiah Thomas, star guard for the Cleveland Cavaliers, who was on the Boston Celtics last year before getting traded in the offseason, hasn't played a game for the Cleveland Cavaliers yet this year. I understand if he's not ready. I truly do. I understand if he's not ready to ball. But you only got two visits left against Boston this season. Tomorrow night in Boston and February 11th. Okay? You only got two. And if you only have two, ladies and gentlemen, here's my issue. The Isaiah Thomas, who averaged 28.9 a game, who lamented the fact that Danny Ainge traded him. So much so that he went on the record basically articulating he felt betrayed. This same Isaiah Thomas is looking for anywhere from 175 to $200 million once he becomes a free agent this summer. By the way, if he plays the way that he played last year, he'll deserve it. Because I'm tired of this kid getting robbed. He's a career 19-point-per-game scorer. He wreaked havoc last year. And not only did a hip injury derail him, but he still came out there and performed despite the fact that his sister was killed in a car accident. Isaiah Thomas is a special talent and a special young brother. Make no mistake about it. But I got to say this. If you're ready to play, why can't you play tomorrow night in Boston? Since it's the first time you will have returned. I don't want to, I, I could, I could give two cents about Isaiah Thomas returning tonight against the Portland Trailblazers, even though you ain't going to find a bigger fan of Damian Lillard than me. 
I love it. Dame Tom. I love it. I love Damian Lillard. Love him. But I don't care to see Isaiah Thomas against them. When I show up in Boston tonight, when you folks tune into ESPN tomorrow night to watch that nationally televised primetime 8 p.m. start game of the Boston Celtics versus the Cleveland Cavaliers, don't you want to see Isaiah Thomas? What the hell do I care about Isaiah Thomas against the Portland Trailblazers for? If I want to see him, Tyron Lou, coach of the Cavs, who I got love for, by the way. If I want to see Isaiah Thomas, it's against Boston. It's against the team that traded you. It's against the team you were salty with for trading you, or at least Danny Ainge. It's in Boston. Who loves you? They know you didn't want to leave. They know you did a great job for them. That's who wants to see you. I don't care about Isaiah Thomas against Portland. Stay home. Stay home. If you're going to show up on the court tonight, because we got stations that, you know, I'm on in Cleveland as well. So I know they hear me. If you're going to stay, if you're going to play, tonight, how come you can't play tomorrow night? And if you're going to play, but you can't play back to back, why come tonight? Why don't you show up to Boston tomorrow night? I want to see Isaiah Thomas in Boston tomorrow night. Kyrie's waiting. Marcus Smart is waiting. The Boston faithful are waiting. I don't give a damn about you up against Portland. You only see them twice a year anyway. Ain't nobody watching you when you're in Portland. We want to see you in Boston. These people drive me crazy. No, good and well, it's a nationally televised game against your old team. But you're going to show up against Portland. What is that? What is that? Eight 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 say ESPN is the number to call. It's 888-729-3776. Let's get back to these calls, which primarily are about football, by the way. Live with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Let's go to Corey in Michigan. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Corey? How are you? I'm doing good, man, and thank you to ESPN for finally getting their stuff together and getting you on the afternoon, brother. Appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Go ahead, buddy. All right. Listen, Jim Caldwell, Detroit, man, is such a mess. Got the passing game, no running game. What coach can we bring in, say, Matt Patricia's been heard, talked about uh, here in northern Michigan. Who can we bring in, man? You know what? getting rid of ownership. I I, got to tell you something right now. First of all, you ain't going to get rid of ownership. You know that. But secondly, and more importantly, you you know where I lost. Uh, let me tell you something right now. I I I I'm, I take no pleasure in seeing anybody get fired. Let me be very very clear about that. But you know when I lost all faith in Mister Caldwell, when you lost to Cincinnati, you're eight and six. You're battling with Dallas, Atlanta, and Seattle for a playoff spot. Game fifteen, week sixteen of the NFL season, Christmas Eve. You lose to the Cincinnati Bengals and get eliminated from the playoffs. The Cincinnati Bengals. Yep. Now, some would argue, well, Stephen A., if you feel that way about Caldwell, why don't you feel that way about John Harbaugh? Maybe I do. Baltimore Ravens haven't made the playoffs the last three years, four of the last five years. I understand Mr. Harbaugh is a Super Bowl champion, but damn, how much latitude do you get? You missed the playoffs four times in the last five years. It might be time for a change. And I like John Harbaugh. And I love me some Ozzie Newsom. But it might be time. They lost that on the last play. Otherwise, Baltimore would have been in the playoffs instead of Buffalo. But you can't lose that game. You can't lose that game the way they did to Andy Dalton in Cincinnati, giving up a 49-yard touchdown pass in the waiting seconds. And you in single coverage. No zone, no double team whatsoever. But as it pertains to Caldwell, here's the issue. And here's what I would say to you, Corey. Caldwell, even though I understand why he had to go, he ain't the biggest problem. You know what the biggest problem is? Matthew Stafford. You know why I bring him up? Even though he's a stud, he can play. He threw for over 4,400 yards this year, 29 touchdowns, just 10 interceptions. Had a quarterback rating of 99. His QBR was only 61. But do you know why I bring up Matt Stafford, Corey? Because he's the highest paid player in the NFL. 
You are the highest paid player in the NFL. You, you, you're the player's version of Marvin Lewis. You still don't have a, you still don't have a playoff victory. When do we look at our quarterback? It's just a guess. I got to run, Corey. Appreciate the call. 888 say ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. Up next, the great Adam Schefter will be in attendance with yours truly, breaking down what's been taking place in this NFL coaching carousel. All that and then some in a minute. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our number two of the Stephen A. Smith Show. The new Stephen A. Smith Show coming at you nationwide in 250 plus markets across the United States of America plus Sirius XM. ESPN Radio Channel 80. Number to call up as always is 888-729-3776. That's 888-SAY-ESPN, 888-729-3776. Get instant gold status at Shell. Join the Fuel Rewards program now at fuelrewards.com slash gold. Reminding you that 15 minutes past hour number two right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show, the great Adam Schefter, NFL insider extraordinaire, will be on the show looking forward to to him joining us, uh, 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 and, and before I, I go to the calls, uh, because there's still a lot to discuss, a couple of things I want to mention. One of the other favorite radio hosts I listen to is my man Warren Ballantyne, a brother special as well. Uh, and I wanted to give a personal shout-out to my man Roland Martin, uh, whose show on TV one got canceled, but he's a friend of mine and and damn good person, great political and socially conscious mind and I wish him nothing but the best. And I just wanted to make sure that I point out, I got my TV screens up in my studio here. Cause in my studio here, I, I got a bunch of studios and uh, um, you watch that show, the talk, you know, on CBS, Cheryl Underwood is on there. The reason why I bring it up is because she's wearing the same outfit that Steve Harvey wore <laughs> on New Year's Eve. <laughs> on Fox. I, mean, I, I love my man, Steve Harvey, but my Lord, some advice. Never, ever, ever host a show in the cold again. He ain't made for it. I mean, I, I, he, he couldn't even laugh straight. He was so stiff. He was so freezing. I mean, Mariah Carey. You know, I mean, she looked more comfortable out there than, than Steve Harvey. And that's saying something. That's just saying something. So I just thought I'd point that out. That was just an aside. Anyway, back to business right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, 888-729-3776. That's 888-SAY-ESPN. Ended the first hour talking about Isaiah Thomas, star guard for the Cleveland Cavaliers, who was on the Boston Celtics last year before getting traded in the offseason, hasn't played a game for the Cleveland Cavaliers yet this year. I understand if he's not ready. I truly do. I understand if he's not ready to ball. But you only got two visits left against Boston this season. Tomorrow night in Boston and February 11th. Okay? You only got two. And if you only have two, ladies and gentlemen, here's my issue. The Isaiah Thomas, who averaged 28.9 a game, who lamented the fact that Danny Ainge traded him. So much so that he went on the record basically articulating he felt betrayed. This same Isaiah Thomas is looking for anywhere from 175 to $200 million once he becomes a free agent this summer. By the way, if he plays the way that he played last year, he'll deserve it. Because I'm tired of this kid getting robbed. He's a career 19-point-per-game scorer. He wreaked havoc last year. And not only did a hip injury derail him, but he still came out there and performed despite the fact that his sister was killed in a car accident. Isaiah Thomas is a special talent and a special young brother. Make no mistake about it. But I got to say this. If you're ready to play, why can't you play tomorrow night in Boston? Since it's the first time you will have returned. I don't want to, I, I could, I could give two cents about Isaiah Thomas returning tonight against the Portland Trailblazers, even though you ain't going to find a bigger fan of Damian Lillard than me. I love it. Dame Tom. I love it. I love Damian Lillard. Love him. But I don't care to see Isaiah Thomas against them. When I show up in Boston tonight, when you folks tune in to ESPN tomorrow night to watch that nationally televised primetime 8 p.m. start game of the Boston Celtics versus the Cleveland Cavaliers, don't you want to see Isaiah Thomas? 
What the hell do I care about Isaiah Thomas against the Portland Trailblazers for? If I want to see him, Tyron Lue, coach of the Cavs, who I got love for, by the way. If I want to see Isaiah Thomas, it's against Boston. It's against the team that traded you. It's against the team you were salty with for trading you, or at least Danny Ainge. It's in Boston. Who loves you? They know you didn't want to leave. They know you did a great job for them. That's who wants to see you. I don't care about Isaiah Thomas against Portland. Stay home. Stay home. If you're going to show up on the court tonight, because we got stations that, you know, I'm on in Cleveland as well. So I know they hear me. If you're going to stay, if you're going to play, Tonight, how come you can't play tomorrow night? And if you're going to play, but you can't play back to back, why come tonight? Why don't you show up to Boston tomorrow night? I want to see Isaiah Thomas in Boston tomorrow night. Kyrie's waiting. Marcus Smart is waiting. The Boston faithful are waiting. I don't give a damn about you up against Portland. You only see them twice a year anyway. Ain't nobody watching you when you're in Portland. We want to see you in Boston. These people drive me crazy. No, good and well, it's a nationally televised game against your old team. But you're going to show up against Portland. What is that? What is that? Eight 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 say ESPN is the number to call. It's eight 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 seven two nine three seven seven six. Let's get back to these calls, which primarily are about football. By the way, live with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Let's go to Corey in Michigan. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Corey? How are you? I'm doing good, man. And thank you to ESPN for finally getting their stuff together and getting you on the afternoon, brother. Appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Go ahead, buddy. All right, listen, Jim Caldwell, Detroit, man, is such a mess. Got the passing game, no running game. What coach can we bring in, say, Matt Patricia's been heard, talked about uh, here in northern Michigan. Who can we bring in, man? You know what? getting rid of ownership. I I, got to tell you something right now. First of all, you ain't going to get rid of ownership. You know that. But secondly and more importantly, you you know where I lost? uh, Let me tell you something right now. I, 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 I take no pleasure in seeing anybody get fired. Let me be very, very clear about that. But you know when I lost all faith in Mr. Caldwell? When you lost to Cincinnati. You're eight and six. You're battling with Dallas, Atlanta, and Seattle for a playoff spot. Game 15, week 16 of the NFL season, Christmas Eve, you lose to the Cincinnati Bengals and get eliminated from the playoffs. The Cincinnati Bengals. Yep. Now, some would argue, well, Stephen A., if you feel that way about Caldwell, why don't you feel that way about John Harbaugh? Maybe I do. Baltimore Ravens haven't made the playoffs the last three years, four of the last five years. I understand Mr. Harbaugh is a Super Bowl champion, but damn, how much latitude do you get? You missed the playoffs four times in the last five years. It might be time for a change. And I like John Harbaugh, and I love me some Ozzie Newsome, but it might be time. They lost that on the last play. Otherwise, Baltimore would have been in the playoffs instead of Buffalo. But you can't lose that game. You can't lose that game the way they did to Andy Dalton in Cincinnati, giving up a 49-yard touchdown pass in the waning seconds. And you in single coverage. No zone, no double team whatsoever. But as it pertains to Caldwell, here's the issue. And here's what I would say to you, Corey. Caldwell, even though I understand why he had to go, he ain't the biggest problem. You know what the biggest problem is? Matthew Stafford. You know why I bring him up? Even though he's a stud, he can play. He threw for over 4,400 yards this year, 29 touchdowns, just 10 interceptions. Had a quarterback rating of 99 His QBR was only 61. But do you know why I bring up Matt Stafford, Corey? Because he's the highest paid player in the NFL. You are the highest paid player in the NFL. You, 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 you're the player's version of Marvin Lewis. You still don't have a, you still don't have a playoff victory. When do we look at our quarterback? It's just a guess. I got to run, Corey. Appreciate the call. 888 say ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. Up next, the great Adam Schefter will be in attendance with yours truly. 
breaking down what's been taking place in this NFL coaching carousel. All that and then some in a minute. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show. Yes, being ready. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to hour number two of the Stephen A. Smith Show. The new Stephen A. Smith Show coming at you nationwide in 250 plus markets across the United States of America plus Sirius XM. ESPN Radio Channel 80. Number to call up as always is 888-729-3776. That's 888-SAY-ESPN. 888-729-3776. Get instant gold status at Shell. Join the Fuel Rewards program now at fuelrewards.com slash gold. Reminding you that 15 minutes past hour number two right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show, the great Adam Schefter, NFL insider extraordinaire, will be on the show looking forward to him joining us. Uh, 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 and, and before I, I go to the calls, uh, because there's still a lot to discuss, a couple of things I want to mention. One of the other favorite radio hosts I listen to is my man Warren Ballantyne, that brother special as well. Uh, and I wanted to give a personal shout out to my man Roland Martin, uh, who show on TV one got canceled, but he's a friend of mine and, and damn good person, great political and socially conscious mind. And I wish him nothing but the best. And I just wanted to make sure that I point out, I got my TV screens up in my studio here. Cause in my studio here, I, I got a bunch of studios and, uh, um, you watch that show, the talk, you know, on CBS, Cheryl Underwood is on there. The reason why I bring it up is because she's wearing the same outfit that Steve Harvey wore on New Year's Eve. <laughs> I, mean, I, I love my man, Steve Harvey, but my Lord, some advice. Never, ever, ever host a show in the cold again. He ain't made for it. I mean, I, I, he, he couldn't even laugh straight. He was so stiff. He was so freezing. I mean, Mariah Carey. You know, I mean, she looked more comfortable out there than, than Steve Harvey. And that's saying something. That's just saying something. So I just thought I'd point that out. That was just an aside. Anyway, back to business right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, 888-729-3776. That's 888-SAY-ESPN. Ended the first hour talking about Isaiah Thomas, star guard for the Cleveland Cavaliers, who was on the Boston Celtics last year before getting traded in the offseason, hasn't played a game for the Cleveland Cavaliers yet this year. I understand if he's not ready. I truly do. I understand if he's not ready to ball. But you only got two visits left against Boston this season. Tomorrow night in Boston and February 11th. Okay? You only got two. And if you only have two, ladies and gentlemen, here's my issue. The Isaiah Thomas, who averaged 28.9 a game, who lamented the fact that Danny Ainge traded him. So much so that he went on the record basically articulating he felt betrayed. This same Isaiah Thomas is looking for anywhere from 175 to $200 million once he becomes a free agent this summer. By the way, if he plays the way that he played last year, he'll deserve it. Because I'm tired of this kid getting robbed. He's a career 19-point-per-game scorer. He wreaked havoc last year. And not only did a hip injury derail him, but he still came out there and performed despite the fact that his sister was killed in a car accident. Isaiah Thomas is a special talent and a special young brother. Make no mistake about it. But I got to say this. If you are ready to play, why can't you play tomorrow night in Boston? Since it's the first time you will have returned. I don't want to, I, I could, I could give two cents about Isaiah Thomas returning tonight against the Portland Trailblazers. Even though you ain't gonna find a bigger fan of Damian Lillard than me. I love it. Dame time. I love it. I love Damian Lillard. Love him. But I don't care to see Isaiah Thomas against them. When I show up in Boston tonight, when you folks tune in to ESPN tomorrow night to watch that nationally televised primetime 8 p.m. start game of the Boston Celtics versus the Cleveland Cavaliers, don't you want to see Isaiah Thomas? What the hell do I care about Isaiah Thomas against the Portland Trailblazers for? If I want to see him, Tyron Lu, coach of the Cavs, who I got love for, by the way. If I want to see Isaiah Thomas, it's against Boston. It's against the team that traded you. It's against the team you were salty with for trading you, or at least Danny Ainge. 
It's in Boston. Who loves you? They know you didn't want to leave. They know you did a great job for them. That's who wants to see you. I don't care about Isaiah Thomas against Portland. Stay home. Stay home. If you're going to show up on the court tonight, because we got stations that, you know, I'm on in Cleveland as well. So I know they hear me. If you're going to stay, if you're going to play, Tonight, how come you can't play tomorrow night? And if you're going to play, but you can't play back to back, why come tonight? Why don't you show up to Boston tomorrow night? I want to see Isaiah Thomas in Boston tomorrow night. Kyrie's waiting. Marcus Smart is waiting. The Boston faithful are waiting. I don't give a damn about you up against Portland. You only see them twice a year anyway. Ain't nobody watching you when you're in Portland. We want to see you in Boston. These people drive me crazy. No, good and well, it's a nationally televised game against your old team. But you're going to show up against Portland. What is that? What is that? Eight 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 say ESPN is the number to call. It's eight 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 seven two nine three seven seven six. Let's get back to these calls, which primarily are about football. By the way, live with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Let's go to Corey in Michigan. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Corey? How are you? I'm doing good, man. And thank you to ESPN for finally getting their stuff together and getting you on the afternoon, brother. Appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Go ahead, buddy. All right, listen, Jim Caldwell, Detroit, man, is such a mess. Got the passing game, no running game. What coach can we bring in, say, Matt Patricia's been heard, talked about uh, here in northern Michigan. Who can we bring in, man? You know what? getting rid of ownership. I I, got to tell you something right now. First of all, you ain't going to get rid of ownership. You know that. But secondly and more importantly, you you know where I lost? uh, Let me tell you something right now. I, 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 I take no pleasure in seeing anybody get fired. Let me be very, very clear about that. But you know when I lost all faith in Mr. Caldwell? When you lost to Cincinnati. You're 8-6. and six. You're battling with Dallas, Atlanta, and Seattle for a playoff spot. Game 15, week 16 of the NFL season, Christmas Eve, you lose to the Cincinnati Bengals and get eliminated from the playoffs. The Cincinnati Bengals. Yep. Now, some would argue, well, Stephen A., if you feel that way about Caldwell, why don't you feel that way about John Harbaugh? Maybe I do. Baltimore Ravens haven't made the playoffs the last three years, four of the last five years. I understand Mr. Harbaugh is a Super Bowl champion, but damn, how much latitude do you get? You missed the playoffs four times in the last five years. It might be time for a change. And I like John Harbaugh, and I love me some Ozzie Newsome, but it might be time. They lost that on the last play. Otherwise, Baltimore would have been in the playoffs instead of Buffalo. But you can't lose that game. You can't lose that game the way they did to Andy Dalton in Cincinnati, giving up a 49-yard touchdown pass in the way in the seconds. And you in single coverage. No zone, no double team whatsoever. But as it pertains to Caldwell, here's the issue. And here's what I would say to you, Corey. Caldwell, even though I understand why he had to go, he ain't the biggest problem. You know what the biggest problem is? Matthew Stafford. You know why I bring him up? Even though he's a stud, he can play. He threw for over 4,400 yards this year, 29 touchdowns, just 10 interceptions. Had a quarterback rating of 99 His QBR was only 61. But do you know why I bring up Matt Stafford, Corey? Because he's the highest paid player in the NFL. You are the highest paid player in the NFL. You, you, you're the player's version of Marvin Lewis. You still don't have a, you still don't have a player victory. When do we look at our quarterback? It's just a guess. I got to run, Corey. Appreciate the call. 888 say ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. Up next, the great Adam Schefter will be in attendance with yours truly, breaking down what's been taking place in this NFL coaching carousel. All that and then some in a minute. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! By the way, coming up approximately 12 minutes from now, Mr. Will Kane. Contributor to first take, uh, Mr. Conservative himself, 
thinks he's much, much flyer than he actually really is. That same Will Kane. Also happens to be a pretty good guy, regardless of the fact that we're polar opposites. He also happens to be a really, really good guy. And uh I hope that y'all support the show. I mean, you know, listen, let me tell you something about Will Kane real quick, because this show's coming up next. He debuts nationwide. Obviously, it's not as profound as me debuting nationwide, but nevertheless, it does have its ups, okay? Let me tell you something about Will Kane real quick before I get to the calls. Um, He thinks he looks much better than he actually does. His hairline is better than mine. I must concede that. Um, He's got a beautiful, beautiful family. It's in, it, I, I almost regret meeting his family, especially Mama Kane, because I met Mama Kane. I met Mama Kane in Fort Worth, Texas. She was there when first take went there. I really, really it's one of the biggest regrets I ever had, because first of all, is I, 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 this is not an inappropriate comment. I mean it very respectfully. But the mama is gorgeous. Mama Kane is gorgeous. OK, she's just she's a phenomenally beautiful woman. But on top of that all. She did the, the, the wife, the kids, the mama, they're all so lovely. I can't be mad. I can't be mean to this guy. I haven't been mean to him since. If you've noticed, I haven't been able to frown at him. I haven't cussed him out. I haven't done anything because Mama Kane and them are watching. Now, I'm a, and then he's going to introduce me to his little kids. They're, 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 they're so beautiful and wonderful. Now, how am I going to talk about their daddy after that? So, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. He's got some good qualities, I guess. But I never would have given him any props like this if it wasn't for the family. But now Mama Kane is watching. So I got to be nice. Will Kane, his show, top of the hour. Don't miss it. Back to the calls we go at 888-SAY-ESPN, 888-SAY-ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. Brian in Pennsylvania, you're live with Stephen A. What's up? Hey, Stephen A. How are you, sir? I'm good. Go ahead. Happy New Year. Real quick. Go ahead, buddy. Stephen A., you covered Philadelphia sports for how many years? 17. 17 years. Have you seen, or have you been following what's been going on in the Philly media right now as oh, it concerns to Nick, to Nick Foles? Uh, I mean, go ahead. It, 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 I, I saw an article on social media a couple of days ago that with NBC Sports or something like that that said, should we be considering Nate Sudfeld as our starting quarterback? And my comment is, I've been a, a Foles fan for since they drafted him. You know, he came on the Andy Reid tree, and I've always felt he's been a very productive uh, player. He's done everything um, that this the Eagles franchise has asked of him to do, whether a starting quarterback role or a backup quarterback role. Won seventy percent of his games. Okay, um, Pro Bowl MVP. He's had one of the best statistical seasons. You're talking about Nick Foles. I'm talking about Nick. Uh, so what? And I, I need you to hurry and get to your play. point. Go ahead. All he does is win. Why is everybody, especially you know, even the fans in the media, are just they seem like they're just out to get this guy? Ryan, he's one- not Carson Wentz. That's why. I know, he's not I know. Carson. And, and by the way, Brian, were you calling up radio shows when he was in St. Louis? No, no. I Thank thought you. That was a disaster for him. Then. Thank you. Know? you. But I, I felt like he should have been traded, though. Now, all I'm saying to you is that you're talking about him like he's some stud. He's had good moments. He's had bad moments. Call me back when I have some time because I'll be damned if I end my first show on Dick Foles. I'm not going to do it, but I appreciate the call. We well, can talk about him tomorrow. Peter in Orlando, real quick. You're live with Stephen A. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Big Todd Gurley. Here's the case for MVP. He's got a 2,093 scrimmage yards, 19 TDs. In 15 games, the guy didn't even play in the last game. And in a home game in London, I really don't think so, Stephen A. So we were 8-1 and one on the road. And my man, if he gets robbed by Hoodie and the New England Patriots, the spy gate, the flake gate, murder gate, I ain't having it no more. It's, it's Todd Gurley for MVP. Okay, I, I feel you on that. I don't blame you because Todd Gurley is a flat-out stud. Uh you know, and they've got the number one ranked offense in the NFL in terms of points. I give you all of that. And Gurley, listen, 1,305 yards rushing, you know, averaging, uh, you know, almost five yards a carry. He deserves props. But you know what? This kid, Jared Goff, has been balling. We can't ignore that. The Sammy Watkins of the world has, ball- has been balling. The Cups of the world have been balling. Now, oh, by the way, this defense of the St. Louis Rams, I'm sorry, no, the Los Angeles Rams, let's be clear about that. There's some studs on that squad, too. So even though Gurley deserves a lot of credit and respect, 
he still doesn't get the nod for me over Tom Brady. Appreciate the call. Uh, let's go to David in Dallas. You're live with Stephen A. Real quick, David, you only got a minute. Go. Oh, what's going on, but I just want to call and congratulate on you uh, on the on the on the new uh, uh, 250 states you got. Uh, what you. kind of fan would I be if I didn't say call and congratulations? Okay, I think the it. definition of a true fan is somebody who wait on the line like I did this morning for over an hour just to say congratulations. And uh, my what I really want to say to you, man, is what's going on with you and the love doctor, man. When can I get some love, doctor, listen, back on listen, the radio, listen. brother? You can call them all. The love doctor is here anytime anybody needs him. I always got the love doctor available. As long as y'all call into the show in plenty of time, it's no problem. The love doctor is always here. I'm here for you. And thanks. And Valentine's Day is, is just a little more than a month away. I'm always here for you. You understand what I'm saying? Because I don't want you guys messing it up. Because it's a, the, 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 the ladies out there, they need love. They need love. They need love and understanding and devotion and all of that stuff. Now, I'm not speaking about myself. I'm not speaking about myself. I'm here to give advice. I'm not here to follow it myself, okay? Because I'm, I, I, I live in a different world. You understand? I got a lot of responsibilities. You understand? So I sort of, I'm married to my work. But you guys, it's a little bit different. Love Doctor's always here. Love Doctor never fails. Talk to y'all tomorrow. Until then, peace and love. Stephen A. Smith signing off. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Channel 80 and the ESPN.